Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit, and as I always am, I'm glad to be back for another review. Now, before I dive into the pen for this review, I wanted to talk just a second about being a reviewer. Um, and this is not uh, to piggyback on Stephen Brown's lovely video, Why Aren't You Reviewing? Um, but this is actually a, a, ties into the pen I'm going to be talking about today. So a reviewer, in my opinion, the best thing a reviewer can do is explain why he or she does not like something or likes something. Rather than saying, this is good, this is bad, explain the why behind the like or the dislike, and then allow your viewers to make their own decisions. That's why the movie reviewers that I read um, are reviewers who can explain why they liked or disliked a movie rather than just saying, it's stupid, it's bad, it's dumb plot. Um, and I try to do that with my pen reviews. I don't always succeed, but I try. The problem, I think, is the problem I have, and the reason I'm bringing this up, is today's pen is a pen that I really, really don't like. Uh, I, re I mean, really don't like it. And I'm having a hard time explaining why I don't like it. It's just kind of this guttural reaction to the pen itself. And uh, it's just not, it's not a pen that I like. So I will do my best in this video to explain why I don't like it. Um, and I will try to do so without being snarky and uh, over the top, but uh, this is a pen I just, I don't care for. So the pen in question is the Parker IM. It's one of Parker's lower end pens. I ordered this one off of amazon.com for $25 or something like that. Comes in this cardboard sleeve here, nothing too fancy. Uh, comes out and the box itself is cardboard and also nothing too fancy. It's a pretty cheap box. Uh, you open it up, got a little flap here, you open it up, and inside comes the pen. Underneath is a Parker Quink ink cartridge and a brochure, a little brochure there. And uh, then there is this pen. I'll go ahead and pull this out. Now, right off the bat, one of the things I don't like about this pen, it's a cartridge and converter pen, and one of the things I don't like about it is it doesn't come with a converter even a cheap one. Now, Parker uses their own proprietary converters, and finding one can be, well, I mean, we live in the age of the internet. It's not hard, but they're not necessarily very cheap either. I mean, the, the one I have in here came from my Parker Premier, but if you were to buy a brand new one, you're looking at probably around $10. So that adds another, if you want to use bottled ink, that adds another expense almost immediately to the cost of the pen. But this pen, to me, has the unique distinction of both being unattractive and boring. It's like it couldn't manage to be both, but it couldn't manage to be just boring or just unattractive. It managed to be both. And, uh, and I really just don't like the look of the pen. So uh, fairly bland pen, black kind of painted finish over a brass barrel, uh, gold colored accents. So the top has a nice little finial here and the standard arrow style clip. The clip feels kind of flimsy. It doesn't feel very solid. The center band here says Parker. And then in the bottom, it says EUSA. Excuse me. That's not what it says, actually. I can't read it. Um, the light's bad, but I'll, uh, I'll do a close-up photo of it if I can. Um, and then another little gold-colored Dealey Bob down here on the bottom. So uh, it's a pop-top pen. And once you pop the top off, there are two things about this pen that I really don't like right off the bat. The first is this ridiculous little nib. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is a tiny, itty-bitty little thing, and it's really unattractive. Uh, it's, it's just not, it's, you know, it doesn't look good to me. Plus, with all the gold accents, you'd think, have a gold-plated nib. No, they left it just plain stainless steel. So it doesn't even match the accents on the pen. It Cheap, bad design. The other is this metal um, section here. And I just, I don't, normally I don't mind a metal section, but for some reason I really don't like this one. Uh, 
I think it's probably because the the nib, because the nib is so small, you have to hold it so stinking close, or you have to hold it so far back that you know I'm right on the step down here, just in order to get the nib to the paper. It's it. I don't like that very much at all. Um, as I mentioned, cartridge converter pen here. Uh, you know, uses Parker cartridges and converters, so you can't use your standard international. And uh, you know, it's it's a metal pen. It's a cheap Chinese-made metal pen. But frankly, a lot of the much cheaper metal pens that I get directly from China instead of through uh, Parker is they're they're just they feel better to them. This this doesn't feel good in the hand. It doesn't feel ergonomic at all. It's just like they said, eh, let's throw the crappiest design together we could and make a pen out of it. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot more to say. You, you know, I don't like the pen. Um, and once I start writing with it, my it doesn't get any better. So let me talk you through the specs on the pen here. Um, the pen is 138 millimeters when it's capped, which is a decently long pen. Um, it is uncapped only 117 millimeters though, so it's just kind of on the short end for me. I don't like getting much shorter than this uncapped. Can be posted, and it does post fairly securely, so you get, I'll give it that. Um, and posted, it is 159 millimeters, and it's okay with the balance. If you have smaller hands, it's going to start to get a little back heavy because the cap is, is kind of heavy on its own. Um, the grip section, the middle of the grip section is nine and a half millimeters, which is a little narrower than I, I generally like. The barrel is 11.6 millimeters. So the barrel of the pen is also a bit thinner. And then the cap at its widest point is 12.7 millimeters. Now, as a metal pen, it's, it's actually not too terribly, uh, too terribly heavy. It's 22 grams for uncapped and 34 grams when it is capped or posted. So it's a little heavier, but it's not too bad, um, especially because the pen is metal bodied. So those are the specs on the pen. I'm going to do a bit of writing, but before I do, I should tell you that this pen, when I got it, well, I, I haven't done any work to it as I normally don't, and I have no intention of doing any work to it because I don't intend to keep the pen. Um, it's this is a pen I will probably never use once I clean the ink out of it from this review. Um, the nib is, it's not scratchy. It doesn't scratch. The tines aren't out of alignment, but it feels as though the nib was not polished. It just feels rough. Um, and, and that's even on Rhodia paper, which is fairly smooth, fairly good paper. It's just not a good writing experience for me. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean. So we are using today the Parker IM, and this is a steel nib. And I don't believe you can get different sizes. I think there is a size, and it writes like a, a US slash European style medium. Maybe a, a medium fine, just in between there a little bit, but it is, uh, it is what I would consider to be a medium nib. The ink for today is Private Reserve. Ebony blue, which you would think is a blue black, but it's actually a little bit more like a blue teal or a black teal, teal black. It's um, it's got a little more green in it than I generally like in my blue blacks. And we're on a Rhodia dot pad. Okay, so let me um, do our quote. That's a bad letter G. George Burns, legendary comedian. Okay, so this pen. As I mentioned, the surface just feels rough. Now, I could smooth it out, but I don't really see the point because I don't like the pen. It don't, doesn't feel comfortable in my hand. 
I, I get tight when I write with it for some reason that I haven't been able to really figure out, which frustrates me. I, I like to be able to know why I don't like something. So not being able to tell why I'm cramping up with this pen, I don't know. Um, it The ink flow is okay. You can see, and you may or may not be able to see, I do tend to get little bits of um, hard starting particularly when I when I stop using the pen for five, 10 seconds. Um, sometimes the it'll start a little rough for me. Sometimes not. It's, it's not easy to force it. Um, yeah, but the ink flow is fine. It runs just a little, it's a, it's a little dry. It's not, and, and I don't know why I do this because it's hard to tell with this if it's a wet or a dry pen. Um, it just, it doesn't feel wet. Um, and I've used a couple different inks because I disliked it so much the first time I wanted to make sure it wasn't the ink that was a problem. And it's not. It's This pen just does run a little dry. Um, in terms of line variation, you can actually get a little bit out of it if you push pretty hard, but I can't imagine anyone actually writing that way. That would uh, that would drive you crazy and probably damage your tendons or something. I don't know. It's uh, so for all intents and purposes, there is no real line variation in the pen. Um, upside down writing, it actually writes pretty well. It almost writes a little better upside down, a little more smoothly, um, almost than it does right side up, which just goes to show me they probably didn't spend very much time working on these nibs, which is understandable for a cheap pen. But I don't understand what I don't understand is why they didn't design the pen to use an easily available standard size nib elsewhere. Because this little itty bitty super skinny nib that doesn't have any wings doesn't add anything aesthetically to the pen and certainly doesn't improve the performance and you can't really swap it out with anything. So it just kind of renders this pen ungood, unusable. Um, I don't know. I just, I am not a fan of this at all. And, you know, if you've used fountain pens before, you know that sometimes you have a pen with which you just do not click. I suspect for a lot of people, this pen would be just fine and they wouldn't have any problems with it at all. Unfortunately, I am not one of those people. I do not like this pen. I would not give this pen to a first-time fountain pen user. Uh, I I just, I can't recommend it. It's just not a very good pen, frankly. Um, now, I know there have been people who have gotten them and liked them quite a bit if, you know, the reviews I read on Amazon or Amazon are any indication. But I've also seen a lot of very poor reviews, particularly on fountain pen sites um, you know, some of the IMs in other station, other places are, you know, two, three stars, as opposed to the four and a half, five star reviews that you see for other more well-known and well-liked pens. So anyway, that is my review of the Parker IM. Hopefully it's given you at least a little indication of why I didn't like the pen, so you can decide if it's something you want to try yourself. You know, it is only 25 bucks, so it's not too expensive to, uh, to give it a go, but I can think of a lot better ways of spending $25 than, or, you know, if you want to use bottled ink, up to $35 on this pen uh, than spending it on this pen. So if you have any questions or comments, you disagree with me vehemently, please explain why you like your pen below, not just that I'm stupid and you hate my reviews. Although you can do that and I'll just delete the comments. That's fine too. Um, but uh, in the comments down below, explain why you like your IM or why you don't like your IM. And if you have any questions, please leave them there as well, or you can email me at penhabit at gmail.com. So thank you very much again for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye-bye.